Well, hello there, and welcome to another edition of Warbird Wednesday. My name is Fred Bell. I am googly eyes today because Greg Kenny, my irascible assistant, has decided that he's going to put me in this. Now, I have no idea what this hat has to do with what we're going to talk today. Talk about today. But we are talking about a drone, maybe some futuristic thing. Now, I'm going to try to get this off without suffering severe injury. That actually came out pretty good. We'll toss it off to the side. Another great catch by the canny. There he is. So, we are talking about uh, the future of aerial refueling. And Greg spent our entire coffee budget on this drone. <laughs> so Greg, throw up a plan view of this little, I'm afraid I'm gonna break it, but what Greg tells me is this is all we could get. This is 3D printed uh, for this particular segment. So here goes. This is the MQ-25 Stingray. Now, my understanding is that going forward, we've talked about all those aerial refuelers. Now, the thing I want you to look at, and Greg can throw up some pictures of this thing, it's about the size of a Super Hornet. So it's not a small airplane. Maybe we could throw up a Super Hornet and then contrast it with this one. Uh, but the interesting thing is, again, how long this has been in development. This aircraft has been in development since 2006. And initially what they were gonna use these things for was either drones or semi-autonomous drones, and they were gonna be lethal strike aircraft. They were designed to be lethal strike airplanes. Now it is no mistake that over my shoulder here is the Predator, which is really the first successful one. Now these are jet engine drones so they're they're a next step up step up but the idea was that these would be uh, essentially lethal this aircraft has two hard points on it it has a rolls royce fan in it so it's a definitely light years above the the predator that's in our miles hangar here that we are today but the navy was looking for a, a, a an attack drone they decided though in 2016 now this, how do I do this gently so I don't offend anyone out there? The big challenge that the Navy has had with aerial refueling is that when they retired the A-6, we're only going to go back to the A-6 and the F-14 Tomcat and so on. The, uh, the aircraft at that time, the A-6 also doubled as a tanker. It was an aerial refueling vehicle. When they retired that, and they had these big, thirsty um, F-14s and aircraft like that, they lost the ability to really have over-the-horizon projection of power, which was a big uh, criticism of the Hornet, which would eventually replace the F-14 as the kind of fighter and the A-6. It was a Swiss Army knife airplane. Uh, but the big problem with the aircraft was that it did not have the legs and the big argument was the range was that if you had somebody get into too close to a carrier battle group or a group of ships that it was protecting that the enemy could deliver lethal force and that's why the f-14 with its phoenix missile was always designed to be over the horizon so fast forward we've worked through what's now called the legacy hornet i'm old enough now to where i'm probably legacy and you're not far away from that, Greg. Uh, the Legacy Hornet uh, is now retired. They've gone to the Super Hornet, which is basically a bigger airplane, right? It's, it's larger than the old Hornet. It's got, they fixed all of the issues and they're now migrating to the F-35, but they never really solved the aero refueling problem. They had various platforms and there was a lot of discussion between the services that everybody's going to share aerial, re aerial refueling and that never really worked out. So finally, I think the Navy in 2016, that's kind of, I want to put this in context. The Navy in 2016 finally said, okay, we are going to develop, uh, the, we're not, 
we, we don't think this is a lethal platform. This platform is built by Boeing. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to retool it as an aero refueling platform. So it went to this designation, the MQ-25, the Stingray, at that point. It was in a competition up to that point with the General Atomics, the Sea Avenger. Sea Avenger, these are all strong names. The Lockheed Sea Ghost, which is another one. And um, the, uh, the Boeing at that time had an aircraft that this is a derivative of, which was the Phantom Ray, which this whole technology grew out of. Uh, they went ahead and did this, uh, this, if you want to say, fly off with these various platforms. And now they were all being retooled, by the way, as refueling platforms. And Boeing in 2018 won the competition, actually won the ability to do it. Uh, the aircraft is designed to carry 15,000 gallons of fuel, so carry quite a bit of fuel. And that's enough fuel in context to fuel four to six aircraft, depending on where they are in their flight dynamic. So let's talk about what that really means. What that means is now, you have probably extended the Super Hornet's range by about 700 nautical miles. Now go back to what I just said about over the horizon capability. We, we've solved a lot of that with integrated sensors and things that we've done. And the F-35 is not the end all be all aircraft that I think it was originally envisioned to be, but uh, the reality is, if we can extend the Super Hornet's range, the Navy can get the F-35 into production. We've kind of closed some of that gap for people to get too close to our ships and do damage. Now, this is what I want to lead into my salute today, and that is gearheads. If you're a gearhead, and what I mean by that is, all of the engineering geeks <laughs> that either made that Predator work or this work, this is the future of flight. I've said it before, the last pilot has probably already been born. In other words, most of these aircraft will be either completely autonomous or flown remotely in some drone form. And there is no question that if you look at the war in Ukraine, the amount of drones, both suicide drones, reconnaissance drones, you know, artillery spotting, all that kind of stuff, there is no question that drone warfare is with us to stay. In this case, uh, the folks working on this Boeing platform, this is not easy stuff to do. If you think about now, you're adding an aircraft moving, you've got a boom, which you have to manage the boom or, or a probe and droge, whatever you've got. You've got another airplane coming in. Think about all of the dynamics that you have to deal with just from mathematical equations to figure out how everything works dimensionally. And so if you are a drone designer and you're working on this stuff and you're sitting at your computer and you found Warbird Wednesday, which who knows, we might have a cult following amongst drone designers, I wanna salute you. And what I wanna do that with today is a all natural soda. It is a sweet blossom elder flower. Come back and I will taunt you a second time. Um, let's see, filtered carbonated water, cane sugar, the usual suspects, uh, I don't, Hmm. This one's interesting. This is another one of those that has no uh, nutritional value stuff on it, which means it's probably got to be really, really bad. Yeah, I don't see it, Craig. It does have a California Redemption sticker or sort of statement. Um, it did not poof at all. Nothing. So Greg's going, no poof. You could hear it. All right, we're going to try this. So to all of you engineering uh, gearheads out there, men or women that are working on this, I'm taking one for the team for you. I salute you. Two for you, as Greg says. Yeah, thanks, Greg. Whew. Whew. 
that's not just gone. That's like vinegary gone. Greg, I'm I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> just one more time. Oh man. Mm. Mm -mm. That that might have that might prompt a pull a call to poison control. That one is a dead soldier. It is gone. So if I can stay coherent long enough to lose this before I have to take the ambulance ride. So the in 2018, Boeing won the competition and, and they've moved forward. Um, it actually, in June of 2021, at the, uh, they're still flight testing it, this uh, drone actually provided fuel to a Super Hornet. VX-23, one of the experimental squadrons within the Navy, is providing support for the program, so GoGo -Go VX-23. And there are 72 of these aircraft planned, so that's quite a few. Uh, it uh, VUQ, Fleet Replacement Squadron, VUQ-10 has already been stood up, so they're actually active. And um, that was actually stood up in 2021, so they're dead serious about this. And then VUQ-11 and VUQ-12 will follow. So these things are headed to the fleet. You will see these in a fleet near you, I would say, unless they run into a real serious problem fairly soon. Now, if you want to amaze your friends with a, a, an airplane that's almost as big as that, because these are nearly as big as that, you need to get out and click on this link because this is actually a bunch of die-cast World War II airplanes where he-man pilots and he-woman pilots, wasps, we gotta cover the wasps, the wasps flew this, uh, flew these during World War II, and it looks like that Corsair in there actually looks maybe a little Korean war -y, but uh, Korean war -y, yeah. But the, uh, uh, you wanna go out, click on this, these are great gifts. You know, if you need a birthday gift for a kid or something like that, get out there, click on that link. Jason will fly down to the post office and get this mailed out for you. Now, if you came across us on YouTube and you like long form aviation videos, especially about warbirds, which is all we do, give us a like, give us a subscription, and send it to a friend because we can always use your subscriptions. Greg, we just passed a milestone. We have 4,000 uh, subscribers. Can you believe that? 4,000 strange people that like these long form videos and thank you if you are a subscriber if you came across us on facebook give us a like and a comment we love your comments we'll we'll chat back with you and remember we cannot do all of this including hang that predator and all the stuff that we do without your donation so click on that donation link give us a few bucks we can surely use it my name is Fred Bell. I am the vice chairman of the Palm Springs Air Museum. Thanks so much. Have a great day. I am going to fly away with my little drone into the sunset. Take it away, Greg. Mm -hmm.